Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, we are uh, completing a mission, trying to complete a mission where we start off on Mars, and we're going to use IMFD to make a flight from Mars back to Earth. So this is going to be part two. Let's go ahead and jump back into things. All right, let me unpause. When we completed the last video, we, uh, or at the end of the last video, we completed our orbit circularization burn. And we found that was going to be necessary because when we look in interplanetary MFD's uh, orbit eject program, we can see that the point of our eject is, this is not looking very nice to me. Um, regardless, the point of our eject was um, after we were going to reach the high point of our orbit. So we needed to complete the circularization first. All right, let's bring back up interplanetary on this side. And now I have to think about what the next part of the process is. I think actually the next part is orbit eject. But let me just think about this. I'm not nearly as familiar with IMFD as I once was with Transex. So I always have to think about these things when I'm using um, interplanetary. So we've done service launch. Yeah, so that means orbit eject is going to be next. And do I want this tied to interplanetary on that side or not? I believe I do. Let me think about that for a moment. Page over, let me look at these variables. Yeah, because... This looks terrible to me. All right, I have to think for a moment. we orbit eject and then on this side we have our target intercept and this has to be connected to this program right there's no other program that would make sense so that's correctly connected to the course program and we're saying our TEJ is coming up in 8,000 seconds so I believe then the next thing I want to do is Okay, so I believe the next thing I want to do is copy the orbit eject over into the delta velocity program. Let me think. One other thing I can do while we're kind of looking at um, orbit eject over here is I notice my EIN is a bit out. So if I change my arrival time just by a little bit, I should be able to bring the EIN down. Just let me see what it takes to do that. Let's go to 100 adjustment. And now back to 10. So just by changing the time of arrival by a few seconds, it should help us with our, um, with our relative inclination, essentially. OK, so yeah, I believe now I want to bring up the uh, course program on this side. That's not right. I want the. That's not right. I want not orbit eject. I want the delta velocity program, but I'm thinking I have to Alright, I think I, I think I actually have to bring up orbit eject on this side first. That way I get a copy of the orbit eject that was getting its information from target intercept. Now on this side, I'm going to have to unshare uh, from the left side. So I'm gonna put in the ID of the right side so that it's unshared. And now I have a copy of the orbit eject plan over here. Now on this side, I can go into course and I can go into delta velocity and I can uh, create a copy of the data from this MFD into the delta velocity program so that I can then use the map program to create our hypothetical orbit transfer. Yeah. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to set our eject time and delta velocity so that it's about the same as our time to begin burn. So we're going to set, and I'm going to go 8735, enter. And now we're going to come to the uh, forward velocity and we're going to copy what we have over here. So we're going to set 
two, one, three, six, and that's good enough. We don't have to worry about the decimal points. And the uh, the plane change, it's too low of a number for me to bother, so I'm just going to leave it at zero. And then the N word, we're going to set that to 33. Again, I'm not going to worry about those decimal points. Okay, so now I have a copy of the burn vector in the delta velocity program. And the reason that you would want such a thing is so that you can then connect the map program to the delta velocity program so that you can get the uh, a better idea of what your arrival is going to be at Earth. Although I find even with IMFD, it's not very accurate when you're going back to Earth. When you go from Earth to Mars, IMFD is very accurate. But when you go back in the other direction, I find it's still pretty far out. And I think that's just because of the Earth-Moon system. Uh, the center of mass between the Earth and the Moon is, um, you know, it's like a thousand kilometers or something like that from the center of the Earth. So I think it, I think that's more than enough to throw this MFD off. All right, now um, I'm referencing Mars. I'm actually not sure if I want to be referencing Mars, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that like it is. So we'll come back over here to the menu. We're going to share side, the right side with the left side. So I'm going to put in one, and then we're going to bring up the IMFD map program. We're going to change our projection. And here I need to reference the sun, and I want to target Earth. And this display doesn't look how I like, so I'm going to turn on the display lines, turn off auto zoom, page over to here, and turn on the plan. Now, the, so the reason that we did all this combobulated change about with the MFDs is for this reason here. We now have uh, the map program getting its, inf getting its hypothetical burn information from the delta velocity program. And now we can tweak these variables on the right side in the delta velocity program such that we can see, according to IMFD's map program, where we're going to arrive at. All right, so I guess we can turn the SOI on. doesn't really matter. Let's page over. And I, what I want to do here, actually, is I, wanna, I don't want... Um, so I want to reference the sum, but as, in terms of my variables here, I want to have these variables displayed in reference to Earth. So I'm going to select until I have uh, reference Earth here, but you'll notice in terms of what IMFD is referencing, it's still referencing the sum, which is what I want. And you can see that according to IMFD's map program, we are 2.1 uh, gigameters away from Earth according to this plan. That's not very good. So we're going to use the delta velocity program on the right side in order to get a better PEA on our on our map program. And I think the better way to always go about that is to start with using time and forward velocity because those are your major that's where all that's that's where the majority of your um, change is going to come from. So let's just see what happens if we increase time by one second. And that's making things worse. So let's see if we do the burn a little bit sooner. So I'll take out some time here. And you can see just by doing the burn just a few seconds sooner, a few dozens of seconds sooner, you know, it's having a massive impact on our PEA at Earth. In fact, we may even only have to adjust time in this case, which usually isn't the way it works out, but maybe in this case. So you can see we bottomed out there at about 87, 88. In my experience, you once you bottom out you want to keep going so now we're we're overshooting we're going in the other direction and i'm going to take this out to about 300 and now i'm going to change uh forward velocity and by increasing forward velocity it's making it worse so now i'm going to take away forward velocity and we're at one let's see how low we get so 20, 17, 11, 7, 5, 6. So now we're now I'm going to overshoot in the other direction by a little bit. I'm going to continue taking out velocity, even though it's making my PEA worse. And I'll take that out to some, you know, about that, a few extra clicks. Then I'll come back to the TEJ and we'll take out time. And we'll go about right there. I'm going to go ahead and use that as my low point, and I just want to see now. 
Okay, so now that puts me inside the planet, which is actually what I want because our uh, this this MFD I know that it's not going to be accurate enough, so honestly it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I but my target at the moment is going to be essentially the center of the Earth, so something like negative four M would be good. So let me take out some time and come back to delta velocity. Yeah, like I said, about negative 4m, something like that would be good. Um, so this is the burn. This is what we're going to do. All right, so with that in mind, now this isn't going to hold because as soon as we time warp forward by even a little bit, this is all going to go out the window. But at least this is, gives us our starting point. All right, so I'm going to page over, bring up the burn vector. And the burn isn't for 8,000 seconds. So actually, um, what we're going to do is we're going to warp time forward we're going to get down to about 600 seconds before the burn which is about 10 minutes and then we're going to have to refine all this because it's all going to be wrong so let's just warp time forward i didn't realize the burn was so far out wasn't thinking about it i was just focusing on getting the pea where i wanted let's get a bit closer yeah, that's a pretty good number right there again that gives us about 10 minutes to fiddle about with our variables and you can see just in those 8,000 seconds you know this is gone all all bad all right so page over so we have access to our variables let's go uh, let's see what the forward velocity is doing at the moment so taking out forward velocity is making things worse so we'll add in forward velocity until we get to that low point once we find the low point we're going to overshoot uh, if necessary which it probably will be so we saw 182 is our lowest number. So let's just go out to 300 M on the PEA. Now let's back up to the TEJ. Add in time. That's helping. Okay, so that's that's helping to a point. So 248, I believe, was 246. Okay, so I'm going to overshoot again to about 400. Now we're going to go back to the the forward velocity. And we're going to add in some more forward velocity. So actually, we're, we're losing ground here. So let me back up to the TEJ. And let's go back to forward velocity. So that's backwards. OK, so let me overshoot just a little bit in this direction, not by much, just to make sure I'm going the right way with these. So that's not what we want. So 285, 271, 262. Okay, so I think we've hit the low point, so I'm going to overshoot again just by a little bit. And now back to forward velocity. So 212, 210, 209. Okay, now I'm going to overshoot again in this direction. I wish these MFDs were more sophisticated, but they're not. So this is what we have to deal with. So 140 something, so we overshot a little bit again in this direction. So 80, 79 was the lowest I saw, overshoot in this direction, back up here. Okay, and I'm just going to go back and forth until I once again drive the XR2 into the center of Earth. So three, so negative one, negative three. Um, let me try one second here. Wrong direction. All right, let's go with that. That puts us uh, really, really far inside the Earth. All right, so let's bring up the burn vector and let's do this burn. Hit the auto burn button. And we'll go ahead and warp time forward. Hands off the keyboard let IMFD take over and do its thing. And we'll go ahead and turn off the plan now so that we can watch the burn results in real time as they come about here in just about five or six more seconds.
So we have about five seconds left on the burn because we're at 10x. And we'll have to do a little bit of cleanup. The, the burn won't be at negative 6m like we put it. So we'll have to use translation thrusters to translation. Uh, get things a bit more where we wanted them. All right, so let's see if forward translation does anything. Yeah, that's helping. Okay, and I just want to put the XR2 as close to the center of the Earth as possible because I feel like that gives us the best chance of, uh, you know, getting back to Earth with the minimal amount of mid-course corrections. But I still know that there's going to be fairly substantial mid-course corrections, or not, I shouldn't say substantial, but there's going to be mid-course corrections. All right, so uh, we're about 16 minutes on this part. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here to the big screen, and let me pause here. And when we come back, we will time warp forward and do any mid-course corrections that we need to do. And uh, well, yeah, we'll just see how far we get in the next video. So I will see you in the next part.